I like to exercise and stay fit. Not only does it boost my confidence, but it helps to alleviate my anxiety and depression. Maybe it's because of those endorphins. Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. But seriously though, does exercise actually have the power to combat depression? And if so, how exactly does it do it? I'm a big advocate for fitness. Exercising a few times a week is an essential part of my look and feel good regime. Hey man, that all sounds great, but you know you actually have to exercise. I was just taking a little break. Who are you? My name is Igor. I'm a powerlifter, bodybuilder, and I have a fitness YouTube channel called Betrue and Physique. Oh yeah, I think I've seen it. Yeah, yeah you have. I get back to work. I joined Igor at the gym to get his thoughts on exercise and mental health. So I imagine you've been working out for quite a long time. Yeah, it's been about 10 years now, I think. Does exercise help you feel better? Uh, absolutely, 100%. To be honest, uh, I can't really explain why that is. It's almost like, uh, that's why sometimes in the industry or in the community, we call it bro science. What do you mean by bro science? Is that like kinesiology? There are certain things which, you know, the human body just loves to do, you know, it loves to eat, it loves to have sex, and it loves to be physically active. We are built and made to do things. We did them 10,000 years ago, we do them 100 years ago, we do them today, and uh, I think exercise is a prime example of one of those things that we are just genetically built to do, and when we do it, our body rewards ourselves. Right, right, we feel good. Well, I, I do believe you, but I am curious what science has to say about the therapeutic aspects of exercise. Several studies say that exercise eases the symptoms of depression. It reduces anxiety, it helps us cope with stress, and it even enhances cognitive control of our impulses. Apparently, it does this through what the scientists like to call neurogenesis. And I learned more about this brain process from Dr. James Kennedy at Toronto's CAMH. Neurogenesis is the creation of more connections and more neural uh, parts. This neurogenesis happens in parts of the brain associated with memory and learning. When we exercise, our body produces proteins called growth factors, such as BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which get the job done and make us smarter. There are factors in the body called trophic factors, meaning they build things. Those factors also go into the brain and they help uh, build connections in the brain and build um, your ability to see new opportunities and have a wider perspective, which also helps you be resilient to depression. It's like the body saying to the brain, hey, you know, we're being active. You, Mr. Brain, better keep up. And it's like, it's we're just, doing lots of stuff here. I'll get more of this neurogenesis or neuroplasticity if I exercise more. Right. Exercise and antidepressants both promote neurogenesis. But I wonder which is better at staving off depression. To find out, in one study, 150 men and women were divided into three groups. The first took the antidepressant Zoloft. The second performed aerobic exercise. And the third did both. So which group performed, or should I say, got better? After four weeks, the majority, about 70% of all three groups, no longer showed the symptoms of major depression. In fact, those on antidepressants, they stopped showing symptoms a little faster. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A follow-up six months later revealed that those doing exercise were less likely to relapse than those on antidepressants. Exercise seems not Exercise seems not only important in treating depression, but preventing relapse. Would you say you've ever gone through any depression or other kind of like mental illness? I wouldn't say to go as far as to say mental illness, but there have been periods in my life, as I think with everybody, where you have gone through periods of sadness, perhaps bordering on depression, and exercise and fitness was definitely one of the key support systems that I think helped me get through that. I remember a time when uh, I broke up with a significant other, it was a long-term relationship, and within five hours I had to be in the gym, 
It's just some way to like, you know, let loose, get my frustrations out, and then afterwards I can get back to real life. But for those two hours, nothing else matters. Maybe Igor's two hours of bliss comes from those endorphins, released by intense cardio or weight training. The name is actually short for endogenous morphine. In other words, natural opioids released within our body to fight our perception of pain. Considering the euphoric side effect of these biochemicals, could exercise actually be addictive? Yeah, there's certainly a lot of clinical reports of people that are, you know, sport junkies and that have a lot of the key characteristics that are associated with addictions. They will have feelings of withdrawal if you, and, you know, if you prevent them from doing their exercise. They will be preoccupied by getting the exercise in and this will, uh, you know, affect their daily functions. It sounds like you have personal well, you know, yeah. experience with this. <laughs> I run all the time. I have an Achilles tendonitis and even though the physiotherapist will tell me, you know, don't do it, I'll still you know, even the, I know the harm that it, it may cause yeah. me. Whew. Exercise addiction can manifest as anorexia athletica when we work out beyond the point of benefiting our physical health. Also possible is body dysmorphia. When we perceive certain parts of our body to be flawed and then work them out obsessively. It's funny, you look at yourself in the mirror and you know your friends and family people around you may say you know you look great you know you look strong you look ripped you know you look healthy you look powerful but you look in the in the mirror and you don't feel that way you don't see that same image you see immediately your eyes go towards your negative points you know i'm too fat here or you know i'm not as big as you know i was last year or where i should be and uh, it's almost uh, you see a negative mirror image of what everyone else sees don't worry addiction to exercise is pretty rare for the majority of us, any kind of exercise is likely gonna be good. A lot of people, particularly people with depression, struggle to motivate themselves. What, why do you think that is? I think it's because they get into the gym and there are no such things, there's no levels. You've got people who've been training there for 10 years. You've got people who've been training for one year and you may be entering the gym for your first time and you immediately feel that this is intimidating, perhaps I'm being judged. You know, who am I to enter the gym with people who've been training for a lot longer than me and perhaps lifting a lot more than me. And I really want to emphasize that that is not the case. Everybody there is worthy of equal amounts of respect, whether they're lifting a thousand pounds or 10 pounds. And um, just walking in the gym is a victory in itself because you are making positive strides towards bettering yourself in terms of your, your physical health and your mental health. All the evidence suggests that aerobic exercise is the magic bullet for mental health. For more severe mental illness, it should be combined with other treatments like CBT or medication, but without doubt, it will make a difference. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's go get our daily dose of endorphins, Wonder Warriors.